Good morning, folks. Our next conference planning is very much underway. But first, consider heading over to Thunderbolts.info today and checking out the info for their upcoming conference next month. I'll be speaking along with many of the well-known New Electric Universe enthusiasts. We've also got the Mars Space Weather Report today from Dr. August Dunning coming at the end of the video, so stick around for that. In terms of what we're reporting today, we'll be taking a look at more earthquakes, the sun, weather indices, a tropical storm at the U.S. coastlines, along with some other weather stories. We're going to come first to spaceweathernews.com, however, and check out the last day on our star in 193 angstroms. Two tiny surface surges, that's about it. We have one calm star. This, of course, includes the solar flaring remaining down in the dumps as the sunspot situation is not exactly proliferative of flaring. We're almost blank. Solar wind shows the speed is peaked in yellow and is now coming back down. We expect the second wave to the coronal streams in the next 24 hours, so that brief instability yesterday may be surpassed as we enter the coming week. As many of you know, there isn't much that can keep an earthquake watch going without coronal holes facing Earth, but the Saturn opposition is one of them, and in fact we've got a few planets loosely aligned there. Fiji's already taken two large quakes, and a seven-pointer struck the South Atlantic yesterday morning. It'd be nice to get a couple days of calm here, but I'm already looking ahead to the coronal hole on the left. We'll swing in to face Earth when Saturn comes into position in less than a week. How's this for extreme weather? Two lightning strikes in France and Germany have sent dozens of people to the hospital, one allegedly during clearer skies. Unfortunately, it appears they will have some more storms rumbling over the continent today, so just be careful out there across the pond. Different kind of worry at the U.S. East Coast. It's looking like the flooding won't be as bad as Joaquin last year, but we're still looking at major rainfall through at least Tuesday, multiple band events bringing rain further up the coastline as well. Not only do we have alerts there tonight, but it looks like more flooding is on deck in Texas where heavy rains are expected again tonight. Down under the lows continue reaching up to the landmass, but hopefully that big one is going to begin departing New Zealand here soon. We had our weekly podcast come out yesterday under Fly on the Wall. We'll get you the June Planetary Geometry Deeper Look today. Check out the Electric Universe Conference pages to see what's on deck next month. Stay tuned for more on the next round of Observing the Frontier coming soon, and also right now for the Mars Report. It's 3.55 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. It's time for the weekly Mars weather review on suspicious observers. Over the last week, density and pressure waves that passed on the 16th and 17th gave way to a three-day period of high-velocity solar wind particle impact to the Martian atmosphere. Mars has no protective geomagnetic field, and the effects were felt significantly at the mid-latitude regions where ultraviolet heating lifts evaporated water vapor aloft, forming clouds in the mesosphere that are then lifted higher during the solar tidal heating on the sun-side atmosphere expansion daily and disassociated at high altitude into gases by the impact of a solar wind and ultimately lost to space. This coordinated attack on the Martian environment is seen in the annual density, pressure, and velocity records for the period mapped against the solar wind at Mars record as a spike in density of 3 particles per cubic centimeter in orange and temperatures of 400,000 Kelvin in red. As a conversion, that's 719,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This fell off and gave way to an extended period of high-velocity solar wind at 600 kilometers per second. The best way to comprehend this information with regards to weather on Mars is to match the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter images to the energetic particle records. In the Sirtis Major region, cloud cover that existed on the 16th is reduced dramatically by solar pressure and particle impacts on the 17th through the 20th, while the extended solar wind velocity bombardment left the atmosphere clear over the period. In the Valmarineris region and the southern hemisphere, this increased solar ultraviolet and velocity pressure created cloud cover that filled the canyon basins, lifted into clouds that were blown off into space all week. Because of this, the curiosity at Gale Crater and the opportunity at Endeavour Crater experienced storm-free skies throughout the week. Mars global temperatures will be in the upper 50s during the day at noon and minus 110 at night with temperatures reaching minus 120 at the South Pole, which is in darkness for several more months. It's peaceful on Mars. 
the serenity is moving. See you next week.